Hey, what's up stream keepers and welcome back to my channel. And in today's topic, I actually wanted to talk to you guys about uh, genetics. It's a follow-up you know, discussion around uh, genetics because the other video I didn't have uh, you know, sufficient time to actually complete all the, the information I actually wanted to share uh, in, 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 that, in that video. And I have also got a lot of great um, inputs from and comments from, from stream readers around the world asking me to discuss a little bit more in depth on, on genetics and how it actually implicates uh, the streams as well. So uh, maybe I'll take a step back to actually share with you guys about you know the, the methodology in terms of genetics. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not a science scientist or a science professor. Uh, genetics is what I've learned through you know uh, some of these uh, research journals and, and things like that regarding selective breeding and so so that discussion is being uh, done at that video so this video is more about you know how do how does uh, genetics actually implicate in terms of your, your your choice of streams you know the longevity of the streams the size of the streams you know some of these uh, genetic traits that is being passed down by by the breeders right for example if i buy from breeder a the stream and i buy from breeder b both of them having like for example the same type of uh, let's say bois or the same type of uh, uh, red stardust or black stardust <clears throat> however you know when they start to breed out uh, then you can actually see not only just the patterns i think one of the the the, the main fallacies about uh, stream you know breeding is that people focus a lot on, on just the pattern itself. So actually, uh, while patterns and colors are, are the top grading uh, criteria, and, and it's being discussed in one of my uh, videos as well, however, you know, there are always subsequent uh, criteria along the way, and, and this actually helps to build uh, the entire grading of the, of the stream. So I can have, you know, you can have a very big stream, but if it doesn't have the color, it doesn't have the patterns, it doesn't have the uh you know the the body ratio and, and things like that then it, it's not going to be a you know a well-rounded graded uh, stream as well so all this is being played by uh factored in by the genetics so for example longevity of a stream the size of the stream these are all genetics and that is the the main key reason why i always emphasize on you know choosing your a, a, a very good source because for example you can actually get uh, like red fancy tigers for twenty dollars or ten dollars, you know. But then the breeders are actually trying to breed them to suit the 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 consumer's taste. But if you are very serious into this uh, stream breeding hobby, and if you are actually looking into or uh, reading and and, and uh, getting information about genetics about streams, uh, you have some you know uh, passion about learning about stream breeding and uh, genetics. Then I I really encourage you know stream breeders to to go for something that you really understand and uh, you ask questions around what are some of the you know uh, breeding methodologies that's being used the the, the lineage where it's being uh, being selected from and how how is it you know ask question around the streams before you actually get to to that purchase uh, decision and one of the reasons is because. It takes time for the streams to breed and by the time you you have the the streams breed out and then uh you 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 kind of like oh realize that uh it's too late now that you want to restart the whole thing again it will take time so this actually happened to me and and through experience i i realized that you know it it, it uh, it's not worth the time to actually go back and then uh, restart your entire uh, project again like for example if you want to start off with a metallic bois uh, project and you really like metallic boas and you have been breeding boas uh, you have purchased boas from a, a, a source and then you realize that they are not metallic and then you have to go back or you have to find another source and then you try to mix them and then at the end of the day you you, you get frustrated you get very disappointed about the, the outcome of the stream uh, however you also need to understand that uh, when we start purchasing the stream, I think it's good to work within your, your budget so that you can actually uh, get the streams, the best streams that you can actually afford in that class. Like for example, if your total budget is uh, $200 and you really want to uh, breed streams, I think you can get 
uh, a good good colony of maybe a blue boats and then start from there and then as you progress on you you want to get uh, better and better streams then you can start to to, to progress further in, in that sense however i understand there there will be some breeders that really like for example they like to breed uh they like boas or black fancy tigers and then they they try to work the stream around their budget so i think it should be the other way around because uh for 200 dollars you want to get a good colony of a black fancy tiger of a from a crystalline then it is going to be difficult right I, i'm not saying that's impossible but it's going to be difficult and and then the disappointment you know the expectation is is uh it's not it's not going to be what what you actually uh, see in actuality so in terms of uh, genetics it is very important to to look at uh, who the breeder is and how the stream actually fare in, in that sense um, so the genetics can only be seen not just on the first uh, you know when you first get got the streams or when you first look at a picture and say oh this stream is is nice and the genetics is good so it doesn't work that way it, it takes a long time for the 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 streams to actually breed and then have the offspring and then when you see the streamlets and then you start to see that okay uh, actually the genetics of this uh, particular batch of uh, streams are actually good and the breeders can be trusted so it takes some time sometimes up to a year or so and that is the reason why you know i have been uh been working with uh, the Taiwan breeders for a long time before I actually uh, you know uh, jump into it and say that okay I think your streams are actually uh, great in that sense because uh, they are being genetically um, protected in that sense so having a, a, a good source is very critical as it it helps in terms of your streams uh, health you know, sometimes people ask me why why are you why don't you experience so so many stream death, uh, compared to mine. Um, so so one of the things is that water parameters is 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 very critical. So water parameters, the environment which is the environment that is they are being, uh, kept at is very critical because, it generally you know uh, either strengthen or they decline the 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 health of the stream. So a good a good environment for the stream uh, water parameters you do your you know your weekly water change uh, weekly weekly meaning that you know you do probably about five percent uh, up to ten percent depending on the the amount of streams that you have in the tank uh, on water change and then you you feed good quality feed you provide them with external uh, sources of uh, biofilm you do not crop the tank um, you know leave them be uh, stability so I think that is uh, you know key to, to having a good health for the, for the streams. So with that and having a good genetics uh, of streams, then you probably will have a much much higher chance in success you know successfully breeding the type of streams that you actually want uh, at the end of the day. So without having you know uh, saying that oh my stream died and then I do not have good offspring to actually carry on the, the genetic line, I mean the, the lineage then <clears throat> Then it becomes uh, quite frustrating for the for the breeders as well. I mean, at least uh, from my side, uh, at the end of the day, I actually want to purchase streams, breed them, see some results, right? And you know, enjoy the hobby as as is. You know, uh, I think that is key to 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 a great hobby. You know, enjoy having that conversation with your with your friends, with your peers, uh, who are breeders. You know and and really enjoy the hobby together instead of you know trying to figure out what is actually uh, tr causing my stream to die uh, am i adding this or that or and saying that oh because i watched that video and then they, they were recommending this i think trying out and making mistakes at the first three months or, or up to six months of your uh, stream breeding journey i think that's fine but after that you have to really look into it so i took about a year or a year and a half to actually uh, get into that in space where I actually kind of like uh, stabilize and, and think that okay this is how I want to, to, to move forward and then uh, and then it really helps so having the environment as I said having the environment created you know, your water parameters and everything your, your infrastructure is being all set up well uh, that environment coupled with a strong genetic stream uh, lineage it will certainly help in, in in the long run and 
and I think I, I really encourage uh, breeders who are actually watching this video to to think very carefully and think very deeply in, in, in that in that sense that you know uh, trying to trying to move and progress on to your next step of your stream breeding journey uh, having better streams having better quality streams uh, regardless of whether you know uh, people are actually buying your streams or not because at the end of the day you have to make a decision whether is this hobby for you or is this hobby just to generate uh, a side income or, or things like that so I think uh, some of the breeders that I've been speaking to so they I mean you know internationally they have been uh, like for example uh, the hungry breeder is is Isvan who is uh, <clears throat> who has came came to visit me in Singapore so he has uh, really shared a very good uh, you know, uh, background or information regarding his 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 direction. Whether you know people purchase the streams or not, that's that's entirely uh, secondary. Because at the end of the day, you will need to have that passion and that love for for the stream or the joy to actually have that the uh, uh, stream breeding uh, passion in, in you before you can actually start to think on the next step. So I think. Uh, from a from a different perspective, we really have to think about what really drives the motives behind uh, what you what what is the first direction you actually want to to do it. Because if your first direction is to make money out of it, then then that stream breeding that you know that trying to level up the next progression is all based on your financial uh, intake from from what you're gonna invest in. So that that becomes a little bit of a uh, uh, hurdle uh, or, or challenge in that sense because you will not be able to take that, that leap of faith or the, the next step because uh, you will constrain yourself in, in, in that space. So I really, I would really, really encourage for those who are really, you know, really keen in, in stream breeding to take the leap of faith to go on to the next step to progress on with uh, better genetic streams. Um, so that, you know, at the end of the day, you really see what is and learn through experience what is what you know and why why are things done the way they are so coming back to, th to this video having a good strong genetics will certainly you know drive you to a much deeper level and, and understanding of you know why are some of the streams so expensive are, 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 are people really crazy about are paying so much about the streams and then from there you will start to realize that oh actually uh, one of the reasons why it is so expensive is not because it's being marketed at, at such a high price it is because it is very difficult to breed so at some point of time for example the the crystalline black fancy tigers that i get from uh, hua you know at sometimes that there, 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 there is just no no streams for you to purchase because it is so difficult to breed and i've tried it myself for many many years it is really difficult to breed and when they breed out it's only a few of it and and out of those few there's only a, a handful that are, are good for selection process. <clears throat> so so this this happens when when the when the genetics start to get narrow and then the streams start to get very very beautiful. Uh, so this is what will actually generally happen when when that. So I would encourage you guys to actually try it out and 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 then experience it yourself so that you know uh, instead of me babbling away saying that you know it is uh, that price because it is difficult or what try it. Uh, and then you will learn to to really appreciate the hobby a lot more because then you have a, a fuller picture of what what the, the, the entire industry is about uh, rather than from hearsay or you know uh, or trust and, and, and things like that so I will really encourage you guys to go ahead uh, take the, the next step progress on to the hobby uh, get good genetic streams and so on and so forth so thank you very much for uh, no, watching this video and if you have not uh, subscribed to this video, remember to subscribe to my channel. I will continue on to, to share some good information uh, from a stream breeding perspective and please remember to like my channel. So until next time, peace out.